Okay, lovely. So today um, I'm just going to do a little 10 minute talk just before you get on to your session. Um, so for those of you that don't know me, I actually work for the Get Help to Get Active service um, and I cover the Ipswich and East area. Um, so today's session, we're going to talk a little bit about barriers and influences. Okay, so what do I mean by uh, barriers and influences? So um, a definition of a barrier, you know, is something that inhibits you or stops you from, from doing something. In this, um, in this case, a barrier will inhibit you or stop you from being physically active. So what I want you to do is just have a couple of minutes um, or maybe just a minute or so just to, to have a little think about your own uh, or some common barriers that you, you know you might you might have heard of from before or you know there might be your own barriers or barriers that friends and family might come up with. Have a little think to yourself um, just to what, what barriers that you know. So, um, so yeah, I'll give you a few seconds, you know, a few moments just to figure that out. So, some generic uh, barriers that you know that tend to come up quite quite often um, are, you know, people say that they haven't got the time, um, something that costs too much, they can't afford it. Um, you know, someone saying that, well, especially in this circumstances, I hear a lot of the time is that I'm not able to leave the house, uh, unsure of what exercises to do or what physical activity is. Uh, unsure, you know, of what exercises are available in my local area. You know, from some people, they don't know what they can do in their area. Um, lack of motivation is always a big one that comes up. You know, I'm unmotivated to, to be active, which is um, one I'll discuss later on. You know, some people have the other responsibilities, whether they've got to look after other family members, whether it's nan, granddad, or even right at the moment, you know, schools are closed. Um, you know, schools are closed at the moment and people are looking after their children. So, you know, childcare is a big one uh, barrier as well. Um, and health conditions, you know, if someone suffers with any kind of health conditions, um, that might this might inhibit them from obviously being active, um, you know, depending on if their health condition um, gives them pain, you know, if they experience pain with their uh, health condition, if they have arthritis, et cetera, or it might be that they have diabetes uh, and they can't, they don't want to be active because they get out of breath too easy. And it's, you know, it's a real struggle. So uh, everyone is different. So what I want you to do now, I'm just giving you a list of sort of common ones that come up. Um, and I want you to now have a think, your personal barriers, you know, what stops you personally now? So I've given you a list of generic ones. Uh, I'm going to give you a few moments to have a little think about some, um, some personal ones. Okay, so now you've had a little think about, you know, your personal barriers. All right, so some of you might say time, some of you might say motivation, some of you might say health conditions, some of you might say um, that you've got to look after family members, whatever it may be. And I want you now to have a little think about whether your barrier is in your control. And the reason that I'm saying this is because the, what we try to tell people um, in our groups and with the services to only focus on things that you can control. And if there's anything that you can't control, then obviously don't worry about it too much. Not only does this relieve the stress of you, you know, you can't control something, so you start panicking, um, that's fine. It relieves that stress, but also what, have a little think about what you can control and try and come up with some ideas and break it down in your head of what you can do to maybe start breaking down um, these barriers. Have a little think to yourself, what can I start to do maybe to break down these barriers? And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, list a common, you know, the most common barriers that I get and then I'll, and I'll give you some ways of maybe how you can break these down. Okay, so I hope you uh, had a few seconds to think about that. So what um, the barrier, the first barrier I'm going to talk a little bit about is motivation. So a lot of people come to me and they say, Carla, I, I want to be active, just haven't got the motivation to be active. So one of the first things I would like to, to talk about is start small. You know, it's easier to build small, uh, consistent wins or consistent steps than it is to have one big challenge. If you're someone that's never, that hasn't ran for the last 20, you know, 10, 10, 15 years, you know, I'm not going to expect you to go run two, three miles um, along the sort of lowest off seafront or um, Felix Stowe seafront, I'm not going to expect you to do that. But what you could start off with is maybe walking this, that, that distance and starting off small, um, even even break that down further. You know, if you're not really used to walking 30 minutes, 45 to an hour, 
you know, walk 10 minutes at a time and gradually increase it. Um, and this will obviously break down your, this will obviously break it down and make it a lot easier for you. So although running might, you can't be, un, you're unmotivated to go for a run, yeah, but are you unmotivated to go for a 10 minute walk? Like it can, the idea is to do something, not nothing. It's better to do something than nothing. Um, so a lot of uh, motivation do sometimes come down to mental health. Um, and it also comes down to pain as well. So a lot of my clients, they go, oh, I'm unmotivated to do that because it causes me pain while I'll put myself in pain. Or, you know, someone who might um, suffer with sort of stress, anxiety and depression and other mental health conditions that they're unmotivated to even leave their house. OK, so one uh, thing that I kind of teach my clients is to come up with two lists um, and one list is a good list and one list is a bad list. And on your good list, it's going to be everything that you can do when you're having a good day. And on your bad list, it will be everything that you can do when, if you're having a bad day. And so on your good list, it might be um go for a walk it might be pop to the shops it could be uh, go for a run it could go go for a bike ride it could be uh doing some yoga it's something that requires sort of physical activity um and on your bad day this could be something on your bad list it could be um doing a crossword or it could be doing a puzzle it could be doing something uh, like sudoku or coloring in um, even if you wanted to be, you know, catch up on a documentary. Um, the whole idea is to do something that stimulates the brain. So although that you're not being physically active, you're still stimulating your brain in some way. Um, and this helps with, um, you know, when people beat themselves up because they haven't done anything. When if you look back and go, well, all right, I didn't go for that walk for 30 minutes that I said I was going to because I weren't feeling it when I woke up. But at least... You know, I did some of my Sudoku or I did some of my crossword and at least you did something um, that was that was productive, but maybe not physical activity. Uh, I hope that makes sense. Um, so there I'm not sure if anyone has ever ever heard of the 21 uh, 90 rule. So just to give you an idea, so the 21 90 rule is something used by quite a lot of successful people. And they say that it takes 21 days to build up a habit. And it takes 90 days to build up a lifestyle. So if you do something consistently for 21 days, then you build up that habit. And once you've got that habit, it becomes a lot easier to then build up into your lifestyle. You know, a lot of people going from nothing to something is um, can be quite difficult. But then baby steps for 21 days builds up that habit. And then you've got that 90 um, that you're aiming for. And then that builds up your lifestyle. So maybe something to think about the 2190 rule um next time you're thinking about it um all right so the next topic i want to talk a little bit about is time you know a lot of people come to me and say tyler you know i haven't got the time to do this i haven't got the time to do that so i always give out my clients a 24 hour work um 24 hour clock sheet and i get them to color in and uh, and fill in what they do sort of throughout the day and you'll be surprised how many times i get it back and it says all right okay i woke up at nine OK, and then they've got all of their things blank until it hits lunchtime and then it's lunch and then it's like, oh, watch TV, watch TV. I was catching up with TV and then it gets to dinner time and then it's just like catch up with TV. And then obviously they go to bed and I'm like, OK, so what have you done throughout the day? OK, well, I've watched TV a little bit. And then so you did have time. It's just the fact that you didn't prioritize the time. I understand that some people are busier than others. You know, some people do work really hard. They've got to look after children and they're obviously bouncing around. Um, but trying to create a 24 hour work, um, clock sheet for yourself and fill in the segments and try and figure out where you can actually schedule in your physical activity for the day. So it might be in the morning, it might be in the uh, afternoon, it might be in the evening, wherever you can see them gaps of, no of nothing happening. This is the, 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 where I'd obviously like to, for you guys to exploit. Um, but if you think about it, we only ask for you to do about 150 minutes of physical activity uh, a week, which is the gu um, recommended guidelines, Public Health England. Um, and 150 minutes, I think there's over like 10,000 10, I think there's only over like 10,000 minutes in a week. So 150 minutes only wakes up and makes up to be about 1% of your week. So if, if you can't give up 1% of your week just to move around a little bit, 
then I don't know, maybe we should start really looking into that. But um, but yeah, that's, that's the sort of the end, end of the session. I hope you sort of enjoyed it and I hope you enjoy your, um, you know, the session you're now going into, your physical activity. And uh, hopefully I'll see some of you around soon. Good morning, everyone. It was a very good talk by Tyler. Uh, I, I think it uh, brings home on any front, uh, on many levels, uh, how we uh, project our life and how we would like to lead our lives. I hope you like the background I'm bringing to you today. <laughs> uh, and hopefully that casts a little uh, re relaxation to you. Uh, let's begin. This is our lesson four today. And in previous lessons, we have talked about how we can connect with our energy and how we can um, replenish quite often uh, some of the things that earlier Tyler have mentioned or how to find our motivation, for example, how to find our inspiration from. And quite often in the traditional Chinese medicine, we believe everything, you know, is coming from within, from inside of us. And this is a golden, uh, golden key we are, uh, I'm sharing with you, I see it, is the golden key to open up that connection and allow us to see ourselves deep down, finding where our heart in the true self, where is our heart lies and finding that connection and projecting and embodying that, um, that deep down acceptance and joy of ourselves and once we have connected within, then the motivation is easy and we would see ourselves a, a beautiful, how beautiful soul and how beautiful body as we are, as you are, and working on the positive energy with ourselves and allow ourselves naturally, like a blossom, to uh, blossom into a beautiful life, no matter how a uh, difficult situation is and we are going through a difficult situation externally but don't forget we also have power within us to lead um, to reflect and to find a approach an approach in our mind in our heart to project a positive um, resilience in, in any situation and in Chinese, we have a saying, xiang chong xin sheng, meaning everything that we put, well, our perception around the world, around the nature, is a projection in our mind, in our heart. So we perceive, we can decide, we can choose how we perceive, how we see the world, how we interpret the situation. Every situation in our lives has a positive energy associated with it and if we are tapping into our true self allow ourselves to open up to that positivity within our heart and heart governs the mind and allowing that unity to happen then you uh, the change of frame of mind will happen and once the mindset is changed, this is the golden opportunity, golden key to open up a new path for our new habit to, to lead our lives. And Ba Duan Jin, the eight pieces of brocade, is, I feel, the most effective and easy golden key. Embody that philosophy, open up the opportunity to cultivate, rejuvenate that positivity within us. Good. We're moving on to the fourth treasure today. It's the name of this particular posture is called looking backwards to tonify qi. Qi is our energy sustaining our life. And in Chinese, 
uh, is called is a poem called Wu Lao Qi Shang Wang Ho Qiao. It's a little uh, poetic way to describe both the movement as well as the function of the movement. Okay, so let me just bring you to this a key. So some of the key functions for this posture, as you can see in the picture, the finish movement will um, involve that, that your extension of the front of the body and extending the neck, the hundred gathering, the chi acupressure point that we introduce, by hui, the hundred gathering, the lifting upwards and extending from the tailbone so the spinal column is on a stretch and extension and making space in the vertebrae of our spine opening about the opening the energy channels um, traveling through the back of our body and eyes neck and shoulder muscles through this movement will be gently gently approach to rotate and through this rotation again we're releasing the tensions and stiffness of um, muscle stiffness and melt them away through this gentle rotation i will lead you to how to do it and guide you through the the movement and also we release the tensions and stiffness and emotional um emotional energies through stimulating the meridians at the back, cross the shoulder and down the neck, the meeting point between, it's called Da Zui point. So we will release this meeting point. Uh, shortly, I will take you through as well. So allowing ourselves to um, release and letting go of this emotional internal stress and improve the blood circulation, when we talk about blood circulation, is also associated in the wider concept about your energy circulating uh, in the pathways of our body. And with it is our releasing the blood um, emotional release as well. So think about our body operate like in the nature, the um, stream in the mountain will gradually spread out and it's a fluid uh, situation uh, in terms of energy in our body and this way if you can see our body is in a, a moving state of the energy then we are trying to find a moving dynamic balance and that it will set us on the really good path to tonify our energy and of course, along the way, well, calming the central nerve system. So if you're finding hard, difficult to have a good night's sleep, you may find the bad one gene before do, repeating this movement, before uh, you go to sleep, will help you have a good night rest and sleep and waking up um, uh, energized. Okay, good. So here is uh, the transmissions of some of the transmissions um, of the posture. We're starting the first is learning a new standing like a pole position. And this new standing like a pole position, number three, is called Fu An Zhuang. Fu An Zhuang. Feel as if you're putting your hands on the side table or resting your hands on the side table with your fingers gently pointing forward and palm facing down soften the elbows soften the wrists shoulders are, are relaxed downwards and from here you may join me on doing the seated position first for my friends who are seated finding difficult to stand up so let me um, just change stop here, stop sharing for one moment. I would like to introduce this seated, okay, and open the energy gate. Uh, oh, I will talk more about the opening, how to open the energy gate within our body. So here, I, at this point in time, uh, I will stop sharing. If I move my chair back, my stool back, 
So hopefully you can see my whole body posture. I'm leaving this entering our practice today on the seated position. Remember how we should sit ourselves. So keep your feet shoulder width apart. I'm using a stool today, just making sure that you are not sitting um, behind the couch. So there's no, there's no back. So you're sitting with the crown, our bai hui, pulling up and the tailbone naturally pointing to sitting down. Keeping your feet shoulder width apart. So your feet are and knees resting on top of your feet. If you can see, I move back a little bit so you can see, yes, resting, a restful position. And we call it standing like a tree pose, but you can adopt this onto seated position. Good. And feel your arms, right? So we're trying to initiate the chi first. Feel your arms are traveling parallel on uh, following the parallel to the floor and the mother earth so mind gently focus on the center of your palm lao gong point pericardium meridian and fingers facing forward and palm facing to the ground mother earth and feel your moving forward sliding hands sliding forward and sliding back that's it sliding forward and sliding back well done and sliding forward clear all thoughts and feel you're in touch with your breathing smooth your breathing sometimes a smaller um, postures and can bring you about bring about the profound feelings with the connection to your body in english in a, uh, you have we have a nice saying sometimes less is more we're using less bodily movement, but bring about more realizations and connections between mind and body. Inhale as you're sliding forward. Exhale as we're sliding back. Well done. And again, smooth your breathing. Inhale. Always feel your sense of your palms. There's a warmth and spreading to your fingers. And the warmth in the bottom of your feet, the bubbly spring point, and spreading the warmth from your feet up towards the body, the center of your trunk. So there's two groups of warms from your hands, the lao gong point, and your feet, your quan point, are all moving up towards the center of your body. Last, last week we talked about the energy centers in our tummy, in our abdomen. Now feel the warmth getting through to the abdomen. Well done. In your own time, once we feel our body is in synchronization with our flow of movement, and now we rest our hands to the side table. The hands resting onto the side table. And now in our mind, in our mind's eye, and we feel we're softening, opening the space underneath our armpits. 
the armpit, remember the cherry tomato space is right under here, that's it. So we feel we're resting onto our air armchair. So back straight and open, allowing this energy channels to pass underneath and the space between our arms and our rib cage. This is a, a nice space allowing the channels for our liver meridian to be smooth. And this is the first energy gate, allowing the underneath your armpit. In Chinese, if you for my Chinese friends, we call this ba shu 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 yi. Shu is to mean not squeeze is to relax letting go tensions from the shoulder and open the arm and secondly in your mind checking your elbows your elbows are nice and soft rest on the restful position good again no tensions and bring your mind to the hands and wrists Xu Wan, Xu Wan. The wrists are gently relaxed and soft, resting onto the side table. And then bring your mind to the hips. Our hips are restful, restful, and lengthening the tailbone. On this point, my friends, if you are carrying on with the seated position, please carry on. Follow me in your mind's eye. I'm going to do the standing up and do the, do, do the diagonal so my standing friends can see it clear. How? On the foot, now in your mind's eye, lengthening the tailbone. So feel your tailbone is slightly lengthened downwards. And if you can imagine that your hip and pelvis, and this is your natural curve, if I do the side view, and uh, there's a natural curve at the lower back. So try to drop the tailbone and gradually lengthening the tail and tummy to your spine, we can open the lower lumbar. Here is the energy gate, the next energy gate. So soften the hips, soften the knees, allowing this it, your spine to be elongated so tailbone pulling down and crown by hui shang ling wei lu xia chen so in your mind's eye this energy is stretches from the top and downwards so in your mind in your back is nice and straight Rest your hands by the side table. Oh, this is the requirement, the eight energy gate. I recap the energy gate on the upper body is underneath your armpit, okay, allowing the energy to pass. And energy gate in your elbows, soften your elbows and Soften the wrists, the next pair of energy gates. And in a lower limb is your hips, allowing the elongation of your torso and spine. Soften your knees as if you're sitting on a high bar stool. Well done. Oh, also, your ankles is nicely softened. So your body weight is spread between both ends of the arch. Your chuan and the back of the heels. Well done. Take a moment, noticing your breath. Tongue is touching the roof of your mouth. Connecting, making the magpie bridge 
connecting the yin energy and the yang energy pathways. And in your mind's eye, feel the warmth, the two group of warmth traveling from the laobong point in your hands towards the abdomen and feel the other group of warmth starting from the feet, your chuan point, traveling up to your abdomen. And our bai crown is opening like a window, opening to the greater energy from higher, wider, higher level of our energy. You can imagine it is coming from the wider, bigger universal energy. It's really trying to, in your mind's eye, to connect our mind and body with the nature and universe. Well done. And let's just prepare once more this feeling of expansion. Rotate your hands upwards and gather your arms up. This is all part of our preparation to release our energy. Feel you gather the energy up, our chi above our head and embrace and inviting and guiding this energy through our crown entering our body through the head space, our heart space, our abdomen space and all the way down removing the stagnation of the energy and let's do three times energizing the body, tonifying the body, gather and embrace greater and nature energy into our body. The light, the beam of light traveling through, removing and melting away our stagnations. Last time, deep inhale, opening our heart and feel the sense of joy the sense of release, letting go, casting a tranquil, calm and peaceful mind and body. Let's do one more time, tonifying and releasing through the mind, to the heart, to all of our organs. When our organs are at ease, our healing naturally happen. Good. And gently rise, returning our palms back to the abdomen. Dan Tian. Good. In your profound calmness, take a deep inhale. Long, smooth exhale. Mantra in your mind. Fang Song. In our, for my English speaking friends, mantra in your mind. Let go. Letting go. With each exhale, out breath. In our mind, we are talking to our body. Release. Letting go. Well done. Our changing the mindset embody that release through every moment mindful practice it's so very important every time when we practice 
we are allowing the process of what would be deep down from our heart to open, surrender all of our emotions out. So now let's continue the rotation earlier, rotation from our body into our heart, starting from our hands. With our hands, can you rotate from the little finger, follow me, little finger rotating, good. Uh, I hope you can see clearly. If you can't see clearly, I move a little closer, okay? You may take the seated position. Uh, if you are standing, I come a little closer. Just rotate, watch my changes of my hands. So when we start from palm facing down, fingers forward. Now watch, fingers starting to rotate. Use your little finger to lead the way. Can you see my rotation? And this rotation from the little finger, good. So your thumb is naturally rotating away, outwards. Allowing this gentle rotation, reach to your wrists from your fingers, reach to your wrists and reach to your elbow, reach to your arm. So feel that rotation, it's spiraling up along spiraling upwards 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 uh, all the way reach to your shoulder and not just that reaching beyond the shoulders reaching to your heart good gradually opening by rotation of your heart to the center opening the chest opening the heart good and at the same time not just rotation this is stage one practice with me and then we explain the next stage so i'm doing slightly forward uh, later you want to start from the side of your hips okay but to be able to give you a rotation start from the little finger this is our heart meridian the little finger remember connected to our heart meridian that to gradually as if you're scooping scooping um, really uh, relax and purified energy from here allowing that rotation and spreading keep rotating keep rotating and opening opening as you rotate you open up your chest that's it open up your chest and rotating well done good and now rotating back rotating back and gradually gradually like a flow of stream rotating back turning the palms back in on the way back you use your thumb you use the thumb to lead the way rotating back that's it uh, can you see my most gentle movement the thumb is connected to the, our long meridians our long meridians expansion and contractions so as here on the way back we use the thumb leading the way rotating back good and return to the side of the hips and follow me from the side view again fingers one fingers pointing down finger pointing down and start from the little finger little finger leading the way rotate as you rotate and allowing it that rotation reach to your elbows and reach to your shoulders reach to your heart and keep lengthening keep stretching away how good and easing out returning using the thumb leading the way rotating back return shoulder uh, return to your hip position good as we do it again lengthening the fingers down rotate through the from the little finger fingers wrists elbows shoulders into the heart good as you're opening the heart 
you try to stretch imagine you have long arms long fingers opening feel that heart is the heart releasing out into the space in front into the infinite distance good our heart is connecting to the wider to the universe of wider nature nice really good and allowing that whatever emotional feeling that stuck in our heart to be released and melt away feel that you uh, we describe the window of the soul is here feel this window of your heart is opening and you go wow in your mind in your heart everything that kind of bottled up and we try to keep we keep storing it in our emotions in here this energy center feel the rotation and opening wow open yourself and literally feel in deep down you are releasing out okay it's a wonderful feeling that whatever in our life at this point in time that we face our own challenge and we all do allowing that challenge to be out in the open and we are accepting it okay with our open heart so this is really effective way simple posture but very powerful empower our own self to achieve to let go of the negativity and embrace the positivity okay let's try to feel we are expanding our heart and we're releasing that emotional energy at the same time okay so really important inviting you to join me on this um, journey on this posture good and soften your knees as if you're sitting on a comfortable air, air chair or imagine a stool ready and standing up crown goes up rise lengthening the fingers down start rotating little finger leading the way rotate fingers wrists elbows shoulders keep opening keep expanding and feel your heart now is opening in your mind go wow ah such a release finally you feel all emotions whatever they are passing no judgment and just letting it go deep inhale we're feeling the new energies coming in through our minds and heart into lungs exhaling exhale returning using the song leading the way back well done and again as you're uh, coming back sitting down soften your knees now sit up or stand up one stand up fingers down two rotate lengthen rotate lengthening keep opening keep opening keep opening your heart making space feel we're surrendering our whatever emotion um, emotional energy that stuck with us and release sense of freedom and exhaling soften your knees rotating your arms back to the sitting full and drawn standing like a tree restoring recentering ourselves regrowing our roots with the mother earth and again rise stand up and rise lengthening your fingers start rotating keep rotating keep lengthening making space now i want you to try to look over your shoulder head turning head turning looking over your shoulder to your left i'm doing the mirrored image still feel your heart is opening 
still have that sense of release and emotional freedom. And now stimulation continues to the back of our neck and easing out, easing out, soften the knees, rotating the arms back. And again, rise, inhale, rotate your arms, fingers, wrists, elbows, shoulders, and now opening your heart and turn the head, look to your right and feel, experience that deep opening. And exhaling, soften your knees, sitting back onto the soft chair, soft stool, softening your knees in return to restoring the energy. Again, we are repeating left and right now. One, open, rotate, extend, long arms, long fingers, turn the head and gaze. Really good. Feel that deep expansion and releasing, easing out, easing out, returning back to the center. Rise again, fingers pointing down, rotating the arms, fingers, wrists, elbows, shoulders and heart, gazing over your right shoulder and exhale as you soften your knees, sitting back to the center. Well done. I'm going to gently uh, share some music with you, trying to enhance this energy that you already have with you. I'm going to share the music with you. There's some, um, a couple of messages. I just make sure you can still hear me. Uh, the message. Okay, no problem. It's not about, um, uh, my sound system. I just want to make sure there's no sound problem. Okay, I'm sharing some music now. Very quiet, gentle music, but it will enhance with our practice. Can you hear the music? Okay, thank you. And now join me, please, uh, inviting you to join me on the seated position or on the standing position. Now you can see my feet as well. When you're ready, and oh, be now. And let's start by sitting without the chairs. Only imagine you're sitting. Hands resting onto the side table. And from this posture, we will try to tonify our chi. Ready, go. Rise, fingers down, rotate. Inhale, opening, keep opening, look over the left shoulder. And two, exhale. Moving, return, easing out. And rise. Head your arms rotating, fingers, wrists, elbows, shoulder, arms, gazing to your right, and easing out, softening in, and sitting down. Again, rise, go with the flow. Inhale, keep listening. Exhale, soften your knees, sitting back. Rise again. Rise. Feel the fresh, positive energy. Inviting into our heart. Exhale, easing out. Let's 
let's do one more for each side. Inhale, deep expansion, long arms, long fingers, your heart is spinning. Exhale, restoring energy, unifying our internal. And last time, keep growing, keep expanding, making space. And exhaling. Soften your knees, sitting down. Wonderful. And now follow me. We consolidate the first three bad uh, ones in the pieces of brocade. Let's get ready to start from the beginning. Treasure number one. Get preparation. Spread your arms from the side. And standing like a tree pose, number one. Initiating the chi. Lengthening the tailbone. Palm, center of the palms, slow gong point. Connecting to dan tian. Bai hui, lifting up the crown. Lifting up. And smoothly breathing. Sense of joy, trustfulness, and peace. Sliding the hands down, treasure number one. Fingers interlocked, rise, turning palms up, stretch. Wow, we're opening the cavities of our internal organs. Big stretch, feel the release, and Spread your arms down, soften your knees. Good. Treasure number one. We're releasing all the sticky tension in our body. We inhale and long, smooth exhale. Soften your knees. What are you feeling when you're waking up in the morning? When we wake up in the morning, the body is maybe still a little stiff. We're half waking up, half asleep. The body is not ready yet. So we try to stretch it out, really allowing our body to wake up, the energy to wake up. So try to adopt this one when you first wake up in the morning or when you're working by your computer. For a while, the body's getting a little, and we're getting a little bit of pain. You spread it out to harmonize all our cavities in the body. We have done three times. Now let's enter the fourth time. We inhale, well done. Feel the face is created. Then I usually recommend fifth repetition each time. Number five. This is because our body needs to be communicated, allowing that feeling, that sensation of stretch to be settled with our muscle memories, with our energy memory. The last time. Inhale. Let it Let's feel the release. Just exhale. Let it go. Release. Allowing the tension to just melt away. Ready? We change to number two. Keep your weight, empty the weight. Wider step to your left, centralize your weight. Now we're doing the opening, sitting, posing as an archer. You're sitting with a horse riding stance, big number 11. Open the chest and lungs to gaze the L-shaped index finger 
and then look with your hands and step in. Good, controlled, very good. This posture to open up our lungs and to stimulate the function, enhance the function of our lung movement. Sitting as if you're shooting arrow and bow. Look the other way, three. Shift your weight and four. That's it. Good. Float your hands down. To the left again. Soften your ankles and knees. Step to the left. Centralize your weight. Two. Riding stance. Sitting down. Draw the bow open. And gaze. Three. Look the other way. And taking the left foot in. Good. To your right. Soften the ankles and knees. Step into your leg, right, this time. And sitting down, drawing the bow to open. To your right. And look the other way. Three. And four. We have done two on each side. Let's just repeat one more on each side. The make is six times in total. Sitting down, the open. Release the tensions to the lower back. And shoulder neck. Stepping in. Smooth as the silk, our movement embodies that flow of energy. Last time. Sitting, going, going, going. Look the other way. And ask the Getting ready for our third treasure. Our third treasure is to heal the spleen and stomach. From the circular position, left hand rise. Extend, push high, push low. Maximum contraction to the right side, maximum expansion to the left. And easing out. This is what we have done last week. And change. Right hand. Stretch high. Left hand push down low. Again, feel the internal, internal expansions. Casting massage effect to our internal organ. Right. Take your time, that's it. Feel that flow in the body. And go with the flow. Sitting and squat. In your own time, inhale. Inhale. Long, smooth. For my Chinese friend, using a couple of words in Chinese. Deep inhales, long, smooth exhale. And in your mind, try to chant mantra. Let go. This is our last time. The sixth and last time. Deep inhales. And long, smooth exhale. Letting go. Fang so. Sitting down. Now we are ready to do our fourth treasure, which is looking back to homify the chi. The hands, fingers forward, and drum, resting on the side table. There we go. Standing up. 
fingers down, rotating from the little fingers, the heart meridian, and face. We do that release and feel that freedom from your heart, letting go of all the emotional energy, easing out, and in, rise, spread, rotate, gaze, look over your shoulder, and breathing out, breathing out. And rise. Inhale. Follow the flow. Deep inhale. Opening the heart. Exhale. Long and smooth. Again. Rise. Inhale. Expand. Breath. And exhale, long smooth. Last time on the side, rise. Inhale, look over your shoulder. And exhale. Soften the knees, continue with extension. Last time to fly. Lensing, rotating, expanding, and long, smooth, exhaling, softening, well done, and returning chi back to after, gathering chi, enter on your palm. Overlapping, turning our hands, the center of our palms, the open point, to the outer. Two, own time, armies, one, inhale, and long, smooth. Now gently giving your mouth a massage. Good. Three times each way. Back the other way. Hug back. Calm. And gently release your hands. Slide your hands down. Back to the side. Good. In the old time, let's just gently roll back your shoulders. Please lift and roll back. While you are releasing it, you can uh, also wiggle your fingers a little and wiggle your toes a little. While you are just wiggle your fingers and toes and roll your shoulders back, I quickly um, to demonstrate, um, quick, just a quick demonstration on the seated position, okay? So we can adopt this to the same position seated. So fingers, while we are um, sort of doing the seated, fingers pointing down and exactly the same sensation, sensation to rotate the arms and extend sideways, down and sideways. And try to uh, leading this rotation, lengthening, lengthening away, right into the heart. Wow, is that safe sensation of wow, allowing the heart to be open and release and it's a new level of freedom and just feels so um, empowering in a way. Okay, let go. From so, Kaiko Xun Tiang, and release. As you return, now you return fingers forward and making sure you are on the seated position, you are still finding that the elongation 
of the spine. Really important to hear a more so than the standing position. So make sure you are continuing to work with the spine while you're opening the chest, extending the arms. Your spinal column is in a nice and vertically aligned position. And try not to sit down with the back. No, no. Feel the, the growing tall. Lengthening, yes, the lengthening of the spine. Up and down when you are sitting. Okay, and then lengthening of your arms. Half. If uh, you're still able to, you can you can use your uh, toes to grab the floor with, on the seating position. On the standing position, you're already doing this. We're already using every single toe to uh, stimulate the movement in our toes. But on the seated position, you develop a little more awareness. Use your toes, toes, a little bit grabbing on the floor and then releasing it. Okay, uh, so you, as you rotate open uh, on a seated position and grab your toes as you open your chest, extending your arms and then releasing the toes. The toes release and again, other side, lengthening. And toes slightly grabbing the floor and then releasing it. So we're using a different way to stimulate the meridian. Okay. Um, I would like now to invite you to return to a seated position. Um, and I've finished my uh, presentation on the seat on, on the PowerPoint. I return. Stop the music now and um, just share, share the PowerPoint one more time and to recap what we have done today. Okay, well done for following me with the, um, the postures. Ah, yes, okay, here we are. This is the uh, open the energy gates. We were here. The energy gates are the pair of armpits, elbows, hips and knees. Um, the hip flexor uh, we already explained. It's very important to allow our energy to pass at this special point. These are the weakest um, uh, connections in terms of the energy. The energy can easily escape from these points. And that's why we need to open the open the gates and to allow the energy flow. Okay. So the key points of this technical uh, part. So opening the rim, rim meridian is the in front of your torso. The uh, what we call the con uh, conception vessel. Rim, my rim is the opening here. And remember the feeling of releasing our energy, energy, um, emotional energy here. Bu lao qi shang. This is from our heart. Start. 嗯,叫什么,打开吧,应该是一种开放的状态 Technically, we want to rotate the arms from the little finger to the shoulder A quick recap now, all the way to the chest and heart Open the shoulders, elbows, wrists However, don't lock, no lock of your elbows And locking creates tension And turn the head to stimulate the Da Tree Meridian, which is across the shoulder blades and down the spine. spine. Here, it, um, Yang energies meet here to release. And look, eyes gaze to over the shoulder to 45 degrees, uh, left and right. On this particular moment is to be looking over to the right. Um, but either way, left and right, to stimulate again our yang reading. And keeping the arms, uh, palms flat and mind in the little finger as well as in the thumb to stimulate the heart meridian and the lung meridian. How? This is also a quick recap on the uh, functions and effects. 
um, as we many times I uh, relentlessly highlight the importance and the close relationship our stiffness in the physical body and uh, have a direct relationship with our emotional well-being our mental well-being when we are mentally um, under stress or uh, emotionally experiencing intense um, emotions like overjoy over anger over uh, sorrow sorrow anxiety and fear all of these uh, intense emotions actually in terms of the energy it cast an in, uh, impact onto our internal organ and this ex can remind us or uh, relate to when we watch a horror movie you when the if sound effects and when the story develops you can feel the heart is racing if you you know uh, you're watching a horror movie and you can feel the changes in the uh, you, we have uh, effect on our skin and all of these uh, physical changes is direct remind us a re reminder to how our mind our our emotions can have a physical reflection to, with it so so it's not difficult to imagine our um, emotional well-being is has a direct uh, link to our physical well-being in traditional chinese medicine the heart the joy the feeling of emotion joy has a direct relationship with our heart is connected with our heart and anger has a direct relationship with our liver and thinking ponder and deep thought have a direct relationship with our spleen anxiety sadness has a direct relationship to our lungs and fear and shock have a direct relationship to our kidneys um, this all the is deep rooted our practice is deep rooted in this um, ancient science of qi i say it is ancient science because it is a science our qi is a science it's an ancient wisdom uh, but very logical once you get to the study of it it's very logical it's very um you know it's uh, the thinking and the, the thread thinking thread it stood the test of time over and over again it's, which is a different approach it's a parallel and different uh, approach understanding to the human anatomy to the modern science that's why i use ancient science um, but the theory and the structure of the theory is very logical and very deep and well structured good so this is uh, all the the theory side behind it i will stop my let well my session today because time is up I hope you have enjoyed uh, the practice today. And uh, if you have any questions, I can, the last few minutes, uh, I can answer your question. Thank you, everyone. So we have a question from Wiki on the chat room. Um, so Master Lee, do we spread our body weight on entire feet or on the heels when we practice Anzuan? Okay, it's a very good question. Yeah, thank you for reading it out, uh, Hannah. Save me time to search it. Good. Uh, there's a gentle, very uh, uh, subtle, very subtle wave. And this wave is not superficially made. It must be a natural flow of your body, of your, of your rhythm, of your chi. If it doesn't happen, if it hasn't happened, uh, there's no need to make it happen but uh, in time with our practice develops deeper there is a gentle rhythm almost as if it, the wind blows the trunk of the tree the, the tree the the branches of the trees and gently being a uh, floating like the, in the wind this is how gentle and subtle and relaxed it is so if i just uh, do standing up and so there is a tiny 
tiny little bit forward and backwards and so um, subtle. There is a small and subtle way and coming back. But please, my friend, be reminded this subtle and wave is a, really a, a natural product of my um, energy, the chi circulate in the body. Uh, if it hasn't happened for you yet, there's no need to make it, to, you know, to sway your body. It's a different way to approach it as swaying or rocking the body. No need to rock or sway body uh, to make it happen. If, it, if you feel it's within yourself to feel comfortable and natural, then that's the right way, just go with it. Otherwise, just be aware at some point in your practice later, you may find that happening naturally. Okay? Thank you. Thank you. We also have another question actually. Um, so that's thanks Faye for the wonderful class. Do we feel the warmth from the feet from our body or mind? Okay, that's another very good question. Uh, it means that you've been thinking about it, yes. Uh, so the warmth, because chi is a concept, it's an abstract concept, we haven't so far scientifically uh, to provide and prove the shape of chi, the smell of chi, or in any way and shape and form to measure the existence of chi. It's a little bit describing the sense of love. We can feel love, but how can we measure love? It's, it's an, love is an energy. It's an energy that you can feel it when you are in love, when you can feel that energy, but it's not a, a solid form that we can feel it. So I would uh, describe this energy field, the warmth is a ray of beam of light and the, uh, a kind of a sensation of warmth. This is the closest that we can uh, relate to being the human senses. And you can, in your mind's eye, uh, uh, guide that sensations, but connect it to your feet, to your center of the palm, and in your mind's eye, connecting it into the trunk of the body, and from your feet, guide it into the trunk of the body. And with your mindful practice, it will happen much, you can feel it much more uh, real and profound. Okay. Hi, Faye. That was my question. And um, okay, so uh, can, I, I'm not very clear. Could, could you please clarify? So if I don't feel, I can feel the warmth from my hand. If I don't feel anything from my feet, you know the yung quan. It that it that means it doesn't mean I practice incorrectly or you know the xing bu zheng quan shi ma bu shi. Okay, no, it doesn't mean you have uh, done many mistakes, you uh, practice incorrect. As long as you spread your body weight between the both ends of the arch, so you're not just uh, pushing the body weight into forward or backwards, you, you, you know where your body weight are, then you are doing the right thing. All through that exercise, I kept yawning. Now, uh, <laughs> my Pilates teacher says that's a good sign because we're getting rid of the air. Is that the same or am I just very tired? <laughs> <laughs> okay, it is a good sign. Uh, sorry, your name is uh, Miss B. It's, yeah, yeah. yeah Miss B. <laughs> that's fine. So it, it is a stages. You see, our practice is a stages. Uh, all of the practice, because we're new to it, the first, the beginning of the stage is to try to find the correct ways to relax, which is different to collapsing onto a sofa, onto, it's different uh, uh, way to relax. So it's a, um, if I say it, relaxing, but at the same time, it's also a highly, highly, high degree of concentration at the same time, but it's a different, concept at first when you're thinking you concentrate on then how can you relax but it's just a very well our brain wave will change to a different wavelength and the physical experience of that first 
first stage can feel it's a state wanting to almost to sleep or feel tired it's because we haven't quite tuning in into the uh, meditative state but heading that way it is the right direction and at this when we are tuning in to a quiet alertness um, before we get in there we tend to feel just the relax you know my brain wave starting to slow down and that's the sign usually we want to go to sleep but in time you are you will be reaching to a brain wave what we call the state of chi which is a quieter meditative frame of mind which is uh, much more alert you don't feel tired but it's a process of regenerating re replenishing of the energy thank you that's interesting okay it's a process. If you keep up the practice, it will become a different uh, experience from the tiredness, oh, from the yawning. It's a good thing starting the uh, central nerve system is calming, and that's a good step forward. And any other uh, experience, it's very good that we exchange the feelings of your practice. And these feelings are very unique to yourself, but also possibly help others to improve our practice. Yeah, did anybody else feel that? Yes. Yeah. Oh, good. <laughs> I'm not alone. <laughs> Morning. Morning. It, it, is, uh, it is a wonderful um, experience. The first many students finding, uh, first thing, the benefit is that they can sleep better now, sleep well. So I say try to do the Bado and Jin before bedtime. It helps us calm the nerve, central nervous system. So you will switch off from all sorts in your daily uh, information process, perhaps about, uh, you know, uh, when is your turn to immunization? I, I'm just throwing things out, maybe about the school reopening, maybe about your business, and maybe about uh, all sorts of um, uh, chores that you have to do. So well, our mind is so busy all the time. And by switching off, you know, this, this from our daily chores, we entering the state of mind of relaxation and uh, allowing to have a better okay. uh, the benefit is um, you know <laughs> you can it's very individual some people find uh, better sleep and other people finding it just shoulder relaxation or perhaps other parts of relaxation uh, or benefits but it's all we're all individual or may feel it differently okay very good. Lovely spending time with you guys. And I shall say um, goodbye from here. Mm -hmm. uh, our traditional way is to make fist, make open palm and join up together. It's the yin and yang. And I say a little bow to you. Thank you so much for being with me and, have, and continue with the journey. Mm -hmm.